we're in Montrose, Colorado, that's in the west-southwest part of the state, in kind of the upper Colorado River Basin. The Gunnison River is one of the main tributaries of the Colorado, and we're also gonna go see the Cimarron River. This is a really beautiful part of Colorado, and it's really diverse. It offers a lot of opportunities, obviously for recreation, but it also is a very important agricultural area. Agriculture uses about 80% of the water in this area by diverting it from rivers into canals and ditches. And with increased demand for water, coupled with increasingly less available water, due to climate variability and warmer temperatures, improved efficiency is critical to the future of this area. Without irrigation, without diverting water from the streams, without being able to deliver water to farms, we wouldn't have agriculture. We wouldn't be able to grow really anything in this arid environment. My name is Kerry Dennison. I'm with Trout Unlimited in the Gunnison Basin. We rely almost solely on water that is delivered in the form of snow. I mean, that snow melts. We divert it from our streams. And if we're having a change in our climate, if more water is being delivered as rain and we can't divert or store or use that water, we're seeing this downward trend in terms of supply in the entire river system. So the kind of the basic premise around irrigation efficiency is to divert the amount of water that you need so that you're not wasting water and that we can leave water in the system for other uses. Carrie, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the Silver Jack Reservoir and it's important to the Gunnison River system. This time of year, snow is melting, creeks are coming up. They're gonna capture some of that runoff, saving the reservoir for later in the summer. And then when they need it later in the summer for growing crops, they'll release that water to the creek, pick it up downstream and deliver it to the farmers. So the whole reservoir and the surrounding forest here is all public lands for anyone to use, correct? That's right, and it's a very popular spot for folks who just want to get out and enjoy western Colorado. So would this be considered low? There's a lot of bank here. It's filling. This has been a pretty wet year, so the reservoir is going to be kept lower this time of year than it might normally be. They can release more water earlier in the season and then fill the reservoir up and save that water for irrigation later in the year. So it's like water in your lawn. If you leave your sprinklers on all night, you're gonna obviously over water. But if you have precision technology that says you need this amount of water, you'd be conserving water and still getting the same growth benefit. That's right. I mean, this is basically an effort to track the demand on the system back to the supply so that and there's not system loss. This is a pretty complex system. Maybe you could uh, draw it out for us. So there's three creeks that are the headwaters of the Cimarron watershed. They fill Silver Jack Reservoir, which then delivers or spills water into the Cimarron River, which flows down to the Gunnison. This will make hydropower and sustain a healthy fishery downstream. The Cimarron Canal diverts water out of the river and runs it into the canal. So obviously this is the diversion structure. Yeah, so here's the ditch taking water down the Cimarron Canal to use it for irrigation. This is the rest of the Cimarron River. Important to realize in a dry year like 2012, the Cimarron Canal dried up the river here, and they have the right to do that. The Bostwick Park Conservancy District have the right to take all the water in the stream if that's what's needed to fill the demands for their shareholders. So the diversion point takes water about 23 miles to the point that we're standing at now, where the water is split and sent to the irrigators on the north side of the system and the south side of the system. So all this water goes to irrigate crops, pasture land. Add this is my brother, Trey Dennison. Trey. He's the manager of the Bostwick Park and Cimarron Canal Reservoir Company. This system here is well over 100 years old, and it hasn't seen much improvement since then. So we're <laughs> scrambling now to, to modernize it. 
So inside of this tube is a pressure transducer and it senses the depth of water. It'll send a signal into this box and it'll tell you how much water is running down this ditch. And you could manage that remotely without wasting time coming up here. Right, so we can control that you know, from our office. I can control it from my laptop. So this kind of technology gives us that real-time data so that we can watch it, you know, 24-7. So this is about 100 cubic feet per second running past me right now that's going to be used to grow hay and other crops in the Montrose area. My grandfather bought this property back in the 30s, and uh, it's traditionally been used for grass, hay, and cattle pasture. I'm Kurt Sandberg. I'm a farmer rancher in Montrose, Colorado. And there's really no way that you could farm and ranch here without this diversion of oh, water. Oh, no, no. So this is a traditional flood irrigation system. If you had the resources to improve this system, what would that look like? Well, ideally, we'd like to pipe it and put it into some kind of an irrigation system, uh, preferably sprinklers, I think, are the most efficient. Good water conservation practices on the part of landowners surrounding national park areas, I would hope is a benefit to the landowner themselves, but also it's definitely a benefit to the National Park Service. Uh, Kurt Sandberg would be a good example who has a home ranch right here in the Boswick Park area where we are right now. We want uh, clean water, we want abundant water uh, flowing into the park, and to the extent that landowners can help us achieve that goal, it, it's a really fabulous outcome. How many visitors do you see on an annual basis in the park? In Black Canyon, we see an annual visitation of approximately uh, 300,000 visitors a year, and it's growing uh, rapidly. So where are you guys from? Uh, we're from Kansas City. As far as I know, the Colorado River, it's a livelihood for the big portion of the Southwest. And, uh, and, and to preserve the, from the source all the way down, it's vitally important. Not just the scenery, but just uh, for the well-being of the nation. In the Black Canyon, the Gunnison is a world-class fishery, correct? It is a world-class fishery. A, a lot of uh, gold medal trout fishing along the Gunnison River through Black Canyon, and uh, you know that also is an important part of our local economy. There we go. Missed him, and then I got him back. Guest one, host zero. It's all about water. We're drinking water for municipalities. It's water for irrigation, for hydropower, but also for a world-class fly fishery, which feeds into the outdoor recreation economy. Well, I'm here with David DeGruy, the president of Mayfly Outdoors. David, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your business. Sure. We are a fly fishing company. Uh, we've been based in Montrose for about 30 years here. And how many employees do you have? We have just about 50, um, a long average tenure. And I think overall a real pride in you know the product because it's made right here in Montrose. So what does this river and the whole river system in the Colorado Basin mean to this community? It's really the cornerstone you know of our community. I think maintaining what is our only asset, we, you know our rivers, is pretty critical. It's amazing. Pretty spectacular. You know, spending some time here in the Gunnison Basin understanding these issues surrounding water use really gained a new appreciation for just how valuable of a commodity water really is. And all the different users and stakeholder groups coming together to use their innovation and creative ideas. Increased efficiency can solve water scarcity issues in a way that benefits farmers and ranchers, fish and wildlife habitat, and the tourism and recreational economies that rely on healthy rivers. Strong cooperation among water users to increase efficiency is working in this part of the Colorado River Basin, but can really work anywhere in the country as water becomes more scarce and more important in the future. <laughs>